Hey, how's it going? Nick Cole here. I just want to apologize first off for the lack of videos in the past few weeks. My family got sick and then I got sick and I haven't really had much time for making videos. I just thought I'd make this quick video to sort of bridge the gap between now and when I get the uh, part three of the operator tutorial series out. And that is coming really soon, I promise. Anyway, I found some really, really amazing free plugins made by this guy named Andrew Riemann. I couldn't really find much other information out about him apart from he made this free set of plugins and you can see on github here he has a bunch of other projects going but uh, the one we're interested in here is the spectral suite one and I just sort of stumbled across this uh, when I was googling some stuff and what this basically is is it's a suite of seven separate spectral shaping plugins I guess you could call them um, what spectral means anyway if you've ever heard that being used to describe any plugins that generally means that it's processing the sound with an FFT algorithm in some way. The, the word spectral has just basically become a sort of buzzword for that sort of stuff these days. And so if you're unfamiliar with what an FFT algorithm is, um, you actually probably aren't because if you've ever used a spectrum analyzer or anything like that, these all work with FFT algorithms. So if we just analyze this drum break here. You see it's analyzing the frequencies contained within it in real time. But like, how would it be doing that? Like, how would you actually program something to do that? Uh, well, it's thanks to these FFT algorithms. So if I zoom in on the waveform here, you can kind of see like roughly, oh, hey, there's like, maybe this is a kick because it's all subby and there's some higher frequency content contained within there but at any given point like if we were to just like highlight this section of the waveform here and zoom in if I gave you the picture of this waveform and I said hey can you calculate all the frequencies involved in this waveform please <laughs> that would be a pretty tall order right and especially if you wanted to do that in real time too but this is where the FFT algorithms come in they make this sort of thing possible and hence we have this graph here. So just a quick layman explanation because I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert in FFT algorithms because I'm definitely not. I just kind of know roughly how they work. Basically what's happening is it's taking the input waveform and it's dividing it up into all its sort of building block um, constituent parts. I guess you could call it so and the amount of different parts it's breaking it into is represented by this block number here so sometimes this is also called the bin amount or fft amount or something like that and if we click this drop down we get a bunch of different numbers so right now we're splitting the sound up into 8192 separate bins and it's spitting out the value of those bins in this graph over time now we could make spectrum here use more bins and would get more detail in the frequency domain you see you actually get a slightly more sort of peaks and troughs here slightly more detail and if we go all the way back down from 16k down to 2048 you're going to see all of these sort of peaks and troughs are going to get smoothed out a bit because we have less bins to work with but we almost get more detail in the uh, amplitude sort of domain, right? Because this is the kick here, and it's sort of jumping up instantly and coming down. It's a lot snappier compared to this high number uh, bin amount. So if I go back to this 16K here, you'll notice that we get more frequencies, but the sort of movement of the graph is a bit sort of smoother and slower as well. So yeah, it's a sort of balancing point. That's why Spectrum defaults to uh, 8192 because it's kind of like a middle ground for the Spectrum thing. You get a lot of detail in the in the sort of frequency spectrum and it's not too smooth looking. That's kind of how that works. Now, of course, when we're looking at the Spectrum, this Spectrum device isn't actually outputting any audio, right? Our audio is not changing and it's not actually editing the sound of our 
or changing the sound of our drum break. But we could use the FFT algorithm to actually change the sound of something as well. Like we could spit out this graph as an actual sound and basically that's going into the domain of like FFT resynthesis. So we could sort of output the sound of each of these bins as a separate sine wave and would get almost the exact same sound as our drum break here except it's kind of almost like a resynthesized thing. And if we were to select the lower FFT amount here, bin amount, whatever you call it, bin size, if we were to resynthesize this at this number, it would probably sound nice and snappy, I guess, but it would sort of lose detail in the frequency spectrum in terms of the amount of different frequencies there are, I guess. So it would sound a bit more white noisy. But if we were to go all the way up to 16K and resynthesize it in that way, we'd get all the right frequencies, except they'd just be slow to come in and out. So we'd get this almost like sort of paddy sound. So now that I've explained that, um, why don't I drag one of these free plugins in? So they're all under the sort of company name is Stepwise. I'm not sure if that's his actual business name or what, but uh, that's what they're called, I guess. So first off, we have this spectral gate which is actually probably one of my favorite things so if i bring this cutoff amplitude all the way down you're gonna hear not much is really happening but if i drag it up <laughs> you get this really spectral kind of sound So what's actually happening here? Well, this is basically, as it says, it's a gate. So it works the same as any other gate. If I drag in uh, Ableton stop gate, whenever the sound reaches, whenever the sound goes below this threshold here, it's cutting it off. And the speed at which it cuts it off is determined by the attack hold and release. We make it a bit more snappy like that. Make it a bit more washy like that. So this spectral gate is doing the exact same thing, but on every single bin, every one of these 2048 bins separately. And so all of the quieter frequencies in the sound get cut off before the loud ones. So you get this really crazy spectral sound when we drag this cutoff amplitude up. Helps if I enable the plugin, doesn't it? And this weak strong balance slider is just a stage after that that changes the difference between the loud sounds and the quiet sounds. So that's almost like a spectral compressor <laughs> or compander or something. So you could squash the living shit out of something with this <laughs> if you wanted to. And just to illustrate my point about the FFT size or the bin amount, if I go from 2048 all the way up to 8092, 8192, you're gonna see that it's gonna get a lot more sort of washy sounding. We're gonna lose all the attack and we're gonna get more release. If we go even higher, it's gonna get even more like that. If we go all the way down to 128, it's going to sound really sort of punchy, but we're going to lose the detail in the frequency domain and we're going to start getting some white noise sounding stuff. It's almost a vocodery, to be honest. And actually, in the settings here, we actually have two different modes. So we've got two different FFT styles. One's the normal FFT algorithm and the other one is a spectral vocoder so yeah, it's even more vocodery don't ask me the specifics of the actual difference between the two because i guess it's just taking the amplitude of each bin and then modulating the frequency of itself or something weird like that 
So you can get some really interesting sounds. So this could be used for contrast, like in a track, maybe every four bars or right before a drop or something, you can just like increase the dry wet of this uh, plug in here. So these plugins actually don't have dry wets uh, like parameters, but you can make your own with this chain selector here. So we just make a separate chain. The second one has nothing on it. The first one has the plugin in it. And then we drag this one all the way right and we drag this one all the way left and then we right click and map to macro one. Now this knob here, if I just, this knob here is essentially a dry wet. So the possibilities are basically endless with this. <laughs> you could just get insanely creative and just do whatever you want, which is exactly the thing I like with my VSTs. <laughs> I don't know about you. Now to show off these other plugins, um, I'm just going to use this sort of weird metallic race sound I made in Serum. Because it's got a lot of harmonics and it's going to be easier to hear what they do, I guess. We've got more of a canvas to work with. <laughs> so the next thing we have here is this bin scrambler now this one is absolutely insane so what this does is it takes each bin and it just randomizes the frequency of them i guess so you get some really really insane results so if i just move around this scramble this is basically just how much it's scrambling the bins <laughs> the rate So as you can hear, you can get some really harsh sort of frequencies on the top end. Uh, it always pays to use a limiter with this kind of stuff, <laughs> so you don't destroy your ears. Whoa. So it's almost like additive synth sounding, like almost like Harmer or something, which is kind of, it makes sense, right? Because we're basically resynthesizing something into separate sine waves. I'm going to change the FFT size. Some really crazy metallic tones. Maybe a lower F50 size. <laughs> and of course you can map these parameters to a MIDI controller or something and just like mess around with it. Why don't we try the vocoder mode here? So obviously, as you can see, it's just absolutely ridiculous for uh, sound design. You can just get just the most ridiculous sounds really, really fast. And now we can bring it in as a parallel layer on top of what's already happening uh, for a more sort of subtle uh, result. Next is the phase lock. So this is kind of just a spectral sort of freezer, I guess. Kind of similar to how like on the hybrid reverb in Ableton, you have the freeze button and it just literally freezes what's happening with the reverb. This freezes the phase of 
every bin or the uh, frequency of every bin as far as I'm aware so the phase is really interesting bring this dry wet to max This is a dry wet for the locking of the phases, I guess. I mean, the locking of the frequencies. So this is making every bin have the exact same phase alignment. And I'm not sure what this amplitude tracking does. What does it say? The level of the overall amplitude tracking. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, random phase. Guess it randomizes the phase. And more phase and frequency. I guess that sort of modulates the phase with the frequency or something like that. could change the 50 size So yeah, this is just basically an interesting sort of freezer, I, I guess you could call it. it. Freezes the phase and the frequency, and maybe you could use that to generate some interesting sounding pads or something like that, or even just crazy sounding uh, resampled basses or something like that. All right, next one is called Morph. Now, this is not a spectral morpher along the lines of like Synaptics Morph or Maldus M Morph. But what this does do is it's a frequency shifter, basically, but it shifts each bin separately. And this graph illustrates how each frequency is getting shifted. So this straight diagonal line represents no uh, frequency shifting. So it's basically just going to sound exactly the same. But if I draw in some nodes, We can just dramatically shift the tone with tiny little adjustments. So right now we're shifting some of the low mid uh, frequencies, I guess these are here, upwards and then we're shifting some of them higher frequencies downwards so we're kind of squishing the frequency spectrum in a weird kind of interesting way. Now one thing about this plugin at least is I've noticed that if you click on the nodes too fast or you create or uh, disable nodes too quickly it will quite easily crash on you. Just keep that in mind, <laughs> it'll crash your whole entire Ableton. At least it does on my system. It's kind of forming to you like that. I'll bring this down, I might even accentuate that. As far as I'm aware though, yeah, you can't modulate the uh, node positions, which is kind of a shame. But if I bring this onto the low code mode. So, <laughs> as you can hear, like, the possibilities are literally endless. Um, you can just get a million, literally just infinite amounts of different tones on the one sound that you're working off. 
just by changing these nodes ever so slightly, which is like really kind of amazing in my opinion. So really, really cool stuff there. Now, some of these plugins are kind of unstable, like they will crash if you sort of push them too hard. Uh, but you got to cut this guy some slack, right? I'm pretty sure it's just the one guy making this and they're free. So <laughs> you can't really complain with a free plugin. Now the next one is called Frequency Magnet. What this does is it basically takes each bin and it gravitates each bin to a certain frequency, <laughs> which is really interesting. So this frequency value here is the frequency at which they're all going to sort of gravitate towards. This width amount is how much or how fast they gravitate towards the target frequency and this bias I think is kind of like how much they will end up going towards that frequency so the difference between these two is kind of subtle I guess but that's sort of my understanding of it anyway I might be wrong about that so not much is happening here because our width bias is so low so we've set the amount it's moving towards that target too low here so if I bring this up to even slightly low you're going to hear a massive difference and you can modulate this to make some interesting basses sounds so if we bring this width up it's going to have even more of an effect i mean down i guess yeah, you can see it, it just instantly goes towards that frequency. Maybe we can make like a really interesting riser with this. So maybe if we automate the frequency and maybe the uh, width bias and maybe we'll start at a low frequency, go all the way up. Our width bias, maybe we can do something like this. So maybe we could automate the um, width as well. Maybe put compressor, limit it pretty hard here. And then maybe, I don't know, uh, reverb. What happens if we put the reverb before frequency magnet? That might be interesting. Yep, <laughs> that's way better of a riser. And now uh, just maybe a high pass filter at the end. And we can modulate the cutoff, maybe a little bit of resonance. So yeah, some pretty interesting results uh, with frequency magnet there, but be careful with frequency magnet for sure, because like I said, if all the frequencies gravitate to the one frequency instantly, they're all going to build up and you're going to get in some insane volumes. So I suggest working with a limiter on that one. Now I'm going to delete all this stuff and show off the last plugin, which is sinusoidal shaped filter. So what this is, is it's basically just a really, really nice sounding phaser that you can really customize and uh, get sounding exactly like the way you want it. It's a little bit different to like an actual phaser filter though. Like if we go into Serum's one and I'll show you. See like this one here, it's got these two giant sort of notches, but with the sinusoidal shaped filter, these notches are more like actual rounded sort of sine waves. 
so it's just kind of more of a sort of scooped out sort of sound <laughs> um, and a bit more cleaner sounding in my opinion honestly so it's very spectral sounding so this is the frequency of the filter this is the sort of almost like a Q value it's like the narrowness of the peaks and troughs of the filter so if we go no narrowness the max narrowness is going to scoop out a lot more of the spectrum And then the phase is kind of similar to the frequency, I guess. It's just pushing that uh, filter shape forward and backwards. So we could sort of make our own custom phaser here. So if I just load in a couple of LFOs. Um, sync them both. Put them on re-trigger mode. And then offset the phase of one of them. So they're kind of opposite now. So maybe we could map the first one to the frequency. And then map the second one to the narrowness. Uh, which is the width there. So it's basically just a really nice sounding phaser that you can really go in and customize the sort of sound of. Now what happens if we change the FFT size? It's not a huge amount of difference with this. Yeah, I suppose there it's refreshing a lot slower. Something else to keep in mind is the higher you make this FFT size, the larger the latency amount on the plugin. So all these plugins will have a little bit of latency. So right now we're at 58 milliseconds. And if we bring the FFT size up, it's going to jump up quite a bit. Yeah, almost a full second there. So. <laughs> Just bear that in mind, you may want to bounce stuff you do with these plugins down because they're quite CPU intensive anyway, but also the latency issue. So yeah, that's the stepwise um, <laughs> spectral suite. And I'm not really 100% sure how many people are aware that this guy has made this amazing free set of plugins. I haven't seen anyone on YouTube cover it yet at least so so i'd suggest if you download them and you like them and uh and you want to let this guy know that he's doing a good job i don't know maybe just follow him on twitter or maybe send him an email or something and say yo i like your plugins uh, you should make more of them because i'm not sure if this guy is going to keep updating them uh make maybe make the ui nicer or uh, add features which would be really cool so the more support um the more likely he will be to continue on with this i guess so I'm not 100% I'm not sure what his plans are for this. So what I'd like to see personally is probably an extra one on top of this that is actual, like, a morphing tool like Zynaptic Morph or something like that. That would be really, really amazing. And I'm sure if we release that for free, all of the color base artists, producers or whatever would probably dive on that pretty fast. <laughs> Uh, one more thing I should mention, I guess, is if you're willing to spend a little bit of money, there is this plugin called Unfiltered Audio Spec Ops, which I actually use all the time. It's really amazing, and it actually has a lot of these uh, spectral style things in there with like modulation options built in, and you can layer different effects together, and it's got a spectral compander and everything. So just know that that exists if, if you're willing to spend a little bit of money. Uh, right now it's 99 bucks. I think that's just the base price normally but it comes on special quite a lot for like 20 bucks or something really cheap so if you want to save your money definitely wait until it's on special but it's a really really good plugin i use this a lot and you can actually see all the individual bins there um, highlighted with uh, 
the different colors and stuff which is really awesome to see that sort of visual representation of what's happening so if you found this video useful i'd really appreciate a subscription um almost at 500 and I really want to unlock that community tab so I can update you guys about when I'm sick <laughs> and stuff like that. And I also have a Patreon where I upload exclusive videos and tutorials and sample packs and Ableton racks and all sorts of stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.